Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings and the mercy of God be upon all of you. Welcome back to the next episode of the proof that Islam is the truth. And today we're going to be talking about the scientific miracles of the Quran. Those statements in the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May God's peace and blessings be upon him that are truly remarkable, that beg the question, how could such information be in a book 1,400 years old? You see, scientific knowledge depends upon the gradual advancement of information. We can only know a certain thing in scientific terms when something has been studied and observed and examined. And of course, the ability to study and observe and examine something depends largely upon what is available to us in order to be able to do that. So for example, how much can we know about the stars and cosmology if we don't have access to powerful telescopes and different ways of interpreting and gathering and then interpreting data from the universe around us? How, for example, can we know about the earth, the earth's crust, the formation of the earth, without sophisticated instruments able to measure it? How could we know, for example, about the details of human embryonic development without the sophisticated processes available to us today in order to be able to acquire that information? This is something concerning how scientific knowledge comes to us. What if we were to come across a book, an ancient book, 1,400 years old, and this book was going to give us information. It was going to reveal facts that we have only discovered recently through our hard-earned scientific method of investigation. And that now, after continued observation and gathering of information, now we know, yes, these are facts, these are things that are true, but no one knew those things 1,400 years ago. No one even had the possibility of knowing those things 1,400 years ago. Then surely this begs the question, where could such information come from? Where could a book so ancient have received such knowledge that is so modern? This is the question we are going to be exploring in the next few episodes of the proof that Islam is the truth. And what we want to remember is that the Quran is a miracle for all times. It was not only a miracle for the Arabs living in Arabia 1,400 years old. For them, the language of the Quran, its structure, its rhythm, its whole meaning was a miracle for them. They would hear the Qur'an as we've shown and they would embrace Islam. It was enough for them. They knew that no human being could produce a work like this. We are not Arabs. We may hear the Qur'an, we may find it beautiful, we may not find it beautiful. So the linguistic miracle of the Qur'an, the, the miracle of the Qur'an's language, it doesn't mean that much to us. But we do believe that the Qur'an is a miracle for all times. It is just as much miraculous for you today as it was for those people living 1,400 years ago. But the way it is miracle, the aspect in which it is miraculous is obviously going to change because the things that we consider to be important today are not necessarily the things that the Arabs considered to be important 1,400 years ago. And just as poetry and language was what the Arabs living in the time of the Prophet Muhammad were so proud of, they were so proud of their linguistic abilities. Today, I think we could safely agree that it is scientific knowledge that we are proud of. We are so proud of the ability and the achievements of science. In fact, Many people will hold up the achievements of science as one of the defining characteristics of the superiority 
of Western civilization. In fact, there is no doubt that the achievements of science have, by and large, in recent times, been a product of Western civilization. And there's no doubt for that reason that many people today are in awe of the West and the power and the ability of the West. We study in universities based upon the patterns of Western institutions. English is the lingua franca, the international language that is spoken all over the world and in which many different studies are performed. And all this is really connected with science and the advancement in science and technology. So the Qur'an is a miracle to the scientists. The Qur'an is a miracle to the people of the 20th and the 21st century, just as it was a miracle to those people living in the desert 1,400 years ago. Now what we plan to do over the next few episodes is to introduce to you some of the statements and explain some of the statements in the Qur'an that are of a scientific nature and that have proven to be in accordance with modern scientific knowledge. Now, before we go into it, I do want to mention a very important matter. And that matter is that the Qur'an is not a scientific textbook. The Qur'an is a book of guidance. In the Qur'an, Allah says, Alif la meem, ذالك الكتاب لا ريب في خد للمتكين. Alif la meem. This is the book, without doubt. In it is guidance for the pious people. So the Qur'an is fundamentally, essentially, before anything else, it is a book of guidance. It is a book that teaches us who is Allah, who is the Creator, that there is only one God that is worthy of worship. It tells us also that Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, is the Messenger of God. It teaches us morals, what is right and what is wrong, how we should behave with each other, how we should behave with the world around us. It teaches us the stories of those pious people who have come before us so that their lives and their examples could be an encouragement for us so that we could further better ourselves. And the Qur'an also warns us of those people who have disobeyed God, who have sinned against God, who have transgressed the limits that God has laid down. And the Qur'an warns us and tells us about the fate of what has happened to those people. The Qur'an is a book of law. It teaches us the laws through which and by which we should govern ourselves according to the wisdom and the knowledge of the mighty, the wise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the Qur'an is not a book of science, but... Without doubt, we believe, we know, that it is from Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And therefore, it is not unreasonable to expect that the information that is contained in the Qur'an should reflect the perfect and absolute wisdom and knowledge that is from God. We should expect, of course, that a book that is from God to be consistent with the reality of the universe around us. Since God is the creator of the universe, and God is the creator of all things, and God is the one who knows everything, surely a book that is from God should be consistent with what we can observe to be facts. Now importantly, we are talking here about facts. And so what I have tried to confine myself to are those aspects that are very clear and that are very obvious and that are not ambiguous. We're not talking here about so much scientific theory, although of course in a philosophical sense, every statement 
in science is a theory. Everything is a theory. It's only in the eyes of scientists a theory that is very, very strongly proven with very, very strong evidence as opposed to a theory that may have very little evidence or perhaps even no evidence at all. And so scientists put their faith, as you could say, they put their faith in those theories which simply offer the best explanation and have the strongest degree of evidence. However, we have really only tried to select those statements from the Qur'an that are supported by the strongest degree of scientific evidence. And again, we only say this because the Qur'an is not a scientific textbook. It's not a book of science. It's a book of guidance. But we should expect that it does not contradict the reality of the world around us. So I have chosen some of those statements in the Qur'an that have also amazed and fascinated me personally. And I remember that when I first read the Qur'an for myself, one of the things that astounded me about the Qur'an was that it lacked the fables and the fairy tales and the type of fantastic statements that you would expect from a book that was revealed 1,400 years ago. In fact, what I discovered is that its statements were truly amazing. We will be talking about some of those things after the break. Don't go away. Stay there for the proof that Islam is the truth.